welcome to another episode of the Red Production Company podcast. I've got the wonderful Sean Dooley and Richard Armitage with me, lead actors in The Stranger. So, Sean, as you're closest to me, let's start with you. How did you, how did you get started in acting? What was the uh, path? Uh, which camera? Straight down which, that one? You, uh, I no mean, joking. Uh, can you please? How, well, um, I was a young child and uh, Richard Armitage was in his 20s and he came to my school and did a talk. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who came to my school. Really. <laughs> um, uh, right, basically, in a nutshell, because I know we haven't got long, um, I failed miserably at being a vet mm -hmm. and being a, uh, or a marine biologist or whatever I could go into to, to, to do with animals. Failed everything, failed my GCSEs. I um, uh, should have got all these sciences and everything and went to put in exams, mm. suffer really badly with... Um, uh, nerves and tension when I got into kind of an exam situation so I would get into exams and just clam up and not be able to do anything yeah. for, the, for, the, for the whole exam whereas my coursework was all A's and that mm. so I got one GCSE um, at, on a C instead of eight and um, so basically consequently my whole career trajectory was done mm. and over uh, you could put violins behind this by the way yeah? yes yeah of course Good. I've actually got Good. a single tear coming <laughs> It's going to wipe it away. He's been saving that <laughs> all day. Okay. And he's heard it before. Um, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, I'm just fascinated that you weren't a vet. <laughs> You've been really good as a vet. I'd love to be. I still want to be. I want Attenborough to kind of go. Well, I saw you very I think good, you quite to. good with animals, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'm pretty stroking dogs. And, sorry, <laughs> go on. Dogs. Go on. Stroking dogs. Stroking dogs. Skill on the CV. <clears throat> and uh, so basically, yeah, the pitch was shut in, uh, which would have been my kind of next step following my dads and granddads. Dads. Dad and granddads. Um, and. Uh, so it was all going to pot and I used to do once a week a thing with Barnsley Youth Theatre which used to be uh, around you know, once a week and I went into them and I told them the week before about my failing my GCSEs mm -hmm. and then the following week I went in and they said listen we've had a chat we uh, think you should become an actor and here is a, a play called The Caretaker that I'd never heard mm -hmm. of and they went in this is a, a speech by Aston um, read this speech learn this speech read the play get it under your belt and we've got a date and time for you to audition for a BTEC course in acting yeah. in Barnsley and it basically I didn't know at the time but they handed me a life in a yeah. way that it, without that moment happening in my life there is no way on earth I would be saying no way on earth it was never an option it was never it was never a, a, a career that somebody like me would have would have would have chosen mm -hmm. um, or thought I w would be capable of doing and still don't really think you know it should be but anyway uh, so I handed me that I went to BTEC got in that BTEC course uh, went to my dad sorry first and went listen they think I should become an actor and my dad in a very un Billy Elliot kind of way said um, you're gonna be unemployed whatever you decide to do because of the pits and everything so you may as well be unemployed doing something you like doing basically I was handed it by Strangers, yeah, uh, in a way, which is by amazing. The stranger, a bunch of strangers. Oh, <laughs> it was you. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, and then you went on to Arden. Uh, did a degree at uh, in Manchester, and then left and was the only person to leave my year without an agent. Oh wow! So then I was like rock bottom, uh, totally pointless, over, and then did everything to get my equity card, which I was the last year that needed an equity mm. card and. In order to kind of prove you were an actor, which I still think is missing today, and I think should, you know, I think something that was invaluable back then because you had to kind of you had to kind of graft to get there. Mm -hmm. I had to do theatre and education for six months. I had to do mm -hmm. plays in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> just purely to get points to get my actor. Yeah. Then be able to say I am a legit actor mm -hmm. and I can work. Yeah. And I think it is. I, I do wish it was still there. I think because it just. It means you've got a graft, and if you're going to prepare to graft, you're prepared to go a little bit further yeah, than just somebody yeah. goes, oh, do you know what, I want to be famous. Mm -hmm. Richard, what about you? How did you get started in acting? Talking of Billy Elliot... <clears throat> you didn't. Um, no, I, no. Was, I was sent, for some reason, I can, and I can't figure it out now, I was sent to tap dancing classes when I was four. Wow. Um, so I don't really have a memory of why I was there. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't very good, although I liked the music. I think I had quite good rhythm, but I was always being told, smile and look like you were enjoying yourself. 
And I, I got to about nine, and I, I suddenly thought, why do they keep saying smile and look like you're enjoying yourself? Because if I was enjoying myself, I'd be smiling. <laughs> um, so I kind of traveled on that line for a, a, a while, and I was bullied for it as well. And the mm. problem with me is as soon as you try to pr push me down or say you can't do this and we don't think you should do that, I immediately push back. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, de I decided really young that I was going to try and make a career out of it. Um, but, but nothing to do with film or television. It was always theatre. I joined the Scouts so I could do the gang show. Mm. Um, so I ended up going to a, um, like a vocational school in Coventry called Patterson College. Um, and then when I left that, that uh, school, I hadn't been to a big London school and needed an equity card. So I ended up joining the circus yeah. in wow. Budapest for six months to get the points to get my card. Got to a circus. Didn't have. A, I didn't know what I was doing. I was throwing hula hoops at, <laughs> at um, skateboarders and waving feathers around and holding onto ladders for jugglers. And, yeah. And uh, but came back with an equity card mm -hmm. and then started going for auditions that were advertised on the back page of the stage newspaper. Yeah. yeah. And doing classes at the same time, heading towards musical theatre, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I did for probably four or five years. I, I was a huffer. That's not. That's nothing to do with animals. You know, it sounds <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I did that, and then and then realised I was still having that that tiny voice at the back of my head saying, "Smile and look like yeah. you're enjoying yourself." And I'm like, I'm still not enjoying myself. And that's when I decided to kind of have like a little career shift and went back to drama school because mm -hmm. uh, I'd always been a reader from from really really young. I'd always just devoured books, and I, you know, I realised that it was my it was the other side of my creativeness that was driving me, the, yeah. the, the sort of literary side. So I went back to drama school quite late, mm -hmm. um, at the age of 23. It's quite late for drama school. But still, I was always focused on theatre. I, I didn't in a million years think that anyone with my face and my nose, which was uh, referred to as Concord when I was a kid, belonged on a screen. So yeah. I had no, absolutely no kind of aspirations to be on film in any mm. way, shape or form. Following on from that, how, one, do you think drama school is, is a good place to go? And two, do you think it's essential? Because I know a lot of young people, they will audition for drama school, audition, audition, thinking it's the only way into the industry. So what kind of, how important do you think drama school is? I, um, first of all, I don't think you have to go. Mm. And yes, I do think it's a good place mm. to go. Mm. I don't think they can really teach you how to act. But what they can do is teach you all of the skills that you need when you w try to work in the industry, which is changing all the time. I, th I mean, I think when I was at drama school, they, they taught me how to make my voice survive over, you know, eight shows a week for, mm. for a 12-week a run, which, w when, uh, you know, when I did The Crucible at the Old Vic five years ago, I really went back to all of that training because I, I was about to lose my voice on the first preview. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so all of those skills that they give you. But in terms of uh, the instinct to be an actor, I, I don't necessarily think anyone can teach you that. Mm. What, what do you, you reckon, John? No, I, I totally agree. Uh, totally agree. I think one of the good things about, uh, think about drama school is being in an environment, I suppose, with people who are also uh, you know, striving to set off on that, yeah. that, you know, that course, and also a place where you can fail. I think I went back and taught a bit at Ard, and I taught naturalism and Stanislavski and all this. I, you wouldn't believe that, would you, <laughs> Stanislavski? <laughs> yeah. And because he was my hero at drama, he was yeah. massive. And what I, what I did love about my drama course, we did no telly. We had one day um, telly with a lovely lady called Maggie Ford. So when I did my first telly, I had no idea what to do because we were taught to do predominantly theatre. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, what we did do is we studied all the uh, different practitioners of theatre and we were left to then choose what you wanted to choose. Yeah. And, and you know, you could all just pick little bits of different people and theorists and just take a bit from everybody you want and hang on to that. Yeah. You know? So it was never forced that you had to be a particular kind of way. And I, I really loved that element of it, of, just finding all these, you know, Arto and a holistic you know, Brecht approach. and all these things, mm. just going, oh, actually, do you know what? And it was, it was nice to be able to have three years to be able to do that. However, saying that, my BTEC course, I think, prepped me even better for, for life because in that BTEC course we did, um, 
And do you know what? Annoyingly, I heard the other day some kids talking. It's become, BTEC become a bit of a derogatory word now, and uh, and, uh, and it's yeah, yeah and, and it's become like, a bit it's of got a the thing. letter B in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a check, <laughs> and uh, which is r really not fair, really. But um, uh, in that course, we did set design and lighting, and sound yeah. design, and and had across the spectrum learnt pretty much had a little walk in different shoes yeah which was amazing and i think that for everybody to then be able to then leave a job and you know rich is very similar on on, on set just to kind of go respect for everybody else's jobs within yeah. the the machine of making something i'm right? usually looking at everyone else thinking i wish i'd done your job instead <laughs> yeah. of this one is there anything you dip your toe into on the other side Ooh. I'm always fascinated with editing, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I love production design as well. I look yeah. at when you arrive on a set and the, the detail just blows my mind. And I think this, that's a really interesting job because you're doing something similar to what we're doing, which is creating the illusion of life, which is so believable. Yeah. Um, and I, I originally, if I, if I was clever enough, I would probably have been an architect. So mm. I look at buildings and I look at sets and I'm, I'm sort of instantly fascinated. So you kind of said that you like to take different bits of different methods of acting, different schools. What about you, Richard? Do you do, you do similar? Um, you know what? There are, there are a couple of um, teachers that have crossed my path um, all through my life. Probably I can count them on one hand that I still retain um, all of the detail that they, that they teach and I didn't realise it at the time, but um, Di Trevis was one of them at drama school. She came and worked with us on our second term, and, and literally everything, everything I do now, there's always something that she would have referenced in in the work. Even when I'm reading an audio book, structuring things and, and uh, just just the honesty of of everything that you do. You know, it's it's the two schools of of one is pretense and the other is truth mm. and some people feel that think that acting is about turning up and pretending to do something and the other school is turning up and but you know convincing yourself that something is real mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I I prefer to sit in I think they're both valid actually yeah. but I prefer to sit in the one where I believe it's real mm. um, and, and it came from from that, that teacher yeah. yeah I'd really like to go back into a drama school and try and take everything that that I've gained yeah. in the industry and try and impart that knowledge to, to kids that are, that are just starting out because um, I think TV and film technique is, is something, it's so c kind of complex and complicated yeah. and, and being able to sort of literally drop into the middle of a scene and pull out one shot from, from a whole kind mm. of uh, scene of high anxiety or, or humour and to, to just find these pieces that you have to you have to do it a lot on film. I don't know where, where the technique comes for that. It's hard, isn't it? Because it's, it's just almost kind of learnt, isn't it, over years in, in a way, isn't it? Mm. And it is difficult. I mean, we, we little daft things like hitting your mark for a for a scene and not looking down at your feet, which if you've watched some of the old films, you beautifully see them walk into set and then go, and then stop. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, beautiful. Yeah. it's really lovely. But um, the first time I, I was asked to hit my mark, I was this kid from Barnes, and I said, "Who's Mark?" Oh, no, fair <laughs> if, if it keeps me in the job. <laughs> the job. I only learned to split the difference about a month ago. Did you? Yeah, I was. I've got no idea what, what I meant. Split the difference. Brilliant. Yeah. Do you know what my my first class? Uh, if I was to go back into drama school, hmm. and, and I'd be like, so my, the title of my first class would be hitting your mark on a horse <laughs> that would be, that, I'd be like bring your own horse and then hit your mark on a horse so you have to get the horse's feet on the mark so that you're yeah. in the right place that uh, does sound like did that a skill that I heard that recently on the it's like trying to get the horse to hit the mark and they say you can ride can you they yeah. put the sandbag down <laughs> for the horse <laughs> so um, is there kind of any kind of specific advice you would say for someone who's done loads of theatre that wants to do screen or is it so kind of a myriad of things that if they want to cross over because I know a lot of people want to do more screen stuff but have come from a theatre background I don't think there's I don't no, think there's a crossover I, I think it's I'm a, saying, I think it's, a I think it's just volume I yeah. think it's just a volume thing mm -hmm. I think you still have to go through, I mean the beautiful thing about God, if you could put them together, the beautiful thing about theatre is having three weeks, you know, if you're lucky, if you're unlucky three weeks, which is what I've normally had, or if you're lucky at six or seven weeks, mm -hmm. 
to, to find the character, to develop the character, mm. to work on the character, to find the through lines, g look up absolutely everything in minutiae and then get rid of it yeah. for theatre. That, uh, that's why I think we all love doing theatre. Whereas telly, you're basically in your hotel room doing it or you're on your own. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, it don't happen very often. We, we met up before big nights of filming and worked together on stuff, but quite often you, 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 you don't work on mm. stuff. You know, there's, no, there's no place to fail. Uh, in television, is there mm. anymore? We used to when we, we first had you get rehearsals, but um, and for for me, I, I think it's the same technique. It's just you know still tr striving to get that truth, still striving to be believable, and for yourself to believe in what you're saying, and to listen to somebody else talking and mm -hmm. how they're affecting you. But it just happens on a stage. You're you're doing that more than that. I think. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's just it's truth, but at a, at a larger scale. Mm. Something that I that I struggled with really early on when I was um, starting out, when you're a little bit unsure of what you're going to do and what you're capable of, and um, because I was always in a rehearsal room because I was a mm. theatre actor, there, there was always this voice at the back of my head saying, "You'll do it on the day, or you'll do it when the when there's an audience in, or you'll." And actually, something that I that I've taken from TV back into the rehearsal room for theatre is that. In a way, television is like one long rehearsal. Mm. So every take is just another rehearsal yeah. that you commit to fully. So that when I'm in a rehearsal room now, I I work as if we're filming everything and yeah. everything's usable. Even though there's not there's no audience in the mm. room, you're trying various versions of the scene. All of them are correct. None of them are wrong. Yeah. Um, and I think I think if you. Uh, if you if you, you 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 work in that way all the time, no matter where you are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, volume is it's it's you still. Um, I think on stage you still can work in close up because there's somebody yeah. sitting three feet away from yeah. you. Yeah. But also you have to you have to engage probably your body a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That you put that on film and someone would be like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> You're probably out of shot by that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, I think as well, in, in, in the sense that when you're on stage, I might, I might be wrong here, but in the sense that when you're on stage, you've got a, Stanislavski called it circle of concentration, you've got, a, you've got another circle that's incorporating an audience, mm -hmm. and where you're stood and how you're, where, where your physicality is to an audience, blah, blah, blah. You've got camera, which is one audience member yeah. looking at you, and I think that's some of the technical stuff I've learned, and I, 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 I I don't look at that and go, "That's an enemy." I, I, I enjoy. It's always a third. You know, we've got this. It's always a third person that's in the scene mm -hmm. in a daft way, and I, I like the fact that, technically, we have a little dance around this, uh, around this inanimate object that is is one audience yeah. member looking at you, and I, re I, I really like that. And there's a lot of people who. I think the thing is, like, if you kind of go all method and, blah, 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 and shut that out, that's like going on stage and going kadoosh and putting a curtain down mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, well, I don't know, I'm t probably talking bollocks, but... No, not at all. Um, well, the, the idea, it, it's the implied narrator of the scene is the camera, so... It, mm -hmm. and, and that viewpoint impacts the how the scene is played out, you know. Yeah. I did think about the idea is if you set up a 360 camera in a room to film a scene, yeah. it would be completely different because yeah, totally. you wouldn't be having that snap viewpoint, um, I think it would be actually impossible, but I thought, you know, something like 12 Angry Men, you could theoretically, because yeah. it was basically Throw one middle. long yeah. take and, and see what happened really. Yeah. It's also nice, it's very nice when you work with, um, I mean, we get exposed to so many different types of actor over in the career, but when you work with people that come from theatre, they, they, they never stop the work mm. when the camera's not on them, they're, they're mm. always in the world and um, mm. I just didn't, I really enjoy that. I think that's the one thing about theatre that you don't necessarily get on film is you're far more in control of it. So when the, sh the play starts, you know that you're driving it and you will continue doing this for the next two and a half, maybe three hours, sometimes yeah. four hours. And um, on film, there's always someone else that will say cut and you think, I was just about to have a moment yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Um, to, but to be in the driving seat is actually mm. quite satisfying. Just moving on as we are, straight for time. Because um, you sort of said you, you, you were the one that didn't leave with an agent of mm. your drama school. How important do you think an agent is, especially early on? Is it, is it get one as quickly as you can? It's or? so hard. I think it's so hard for people. This, the, the number of people leaving drama colleges has, has upped. The number of charlatan agents that are out there who get kids who have not got very much money to pay monthly so that they can be represented, which I think it, are just scum. To be honest with you, 
and take the money when you've earned it or take the money off these kids before they've earned it. It's not fair. Uh, it's a message to any of you out there, if you listen. Um, sorry, got a bit angry there. Uh, <laughs> did it, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. Um, Is it important to get an agent at the start kind of as quickly as you can, like a good agent anyway? <sighs> it's so hard. I don't know. I, I think, the aim, uh, you know what, I've seen many of my friends and colleagues, I've seen people function in the industry without an agent. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more difficult. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I, I think it's crucial really yeah. to, to um, creating a, a long and healthy career. You, mm. just, you do need somebody guiding you because you, most of the time you can't even get in the door without, without someone yeah. on your behalf knocking on it mm -hmm. with the right people. Mm. And, um, in a way it was, talk, going back to drama school, one of the, there were two reasons why I went back to drama school. Because I didn't have the confidence to, to move into an industry without the, in a way, the, the, the qualification or the, yeah. the certificate. But I also knew that I couldn't function in the industry without an agent. Mm. And drama school was the only place to really cultivate that. Yeah, I think. yeah. Is there anything that you feel has changed dramatically from the start of your career towards the point now? Is there anything that surprised you on the my, way? My face. <laughs> I mean, please, can I just like pick it up off the floor? It's really hard to age on screen uh, yeah. uh, over tw 20 years. It's really hard when you look yeah. back at stuff you've it. Done yeah, I know, I go, oh my goodness. You've really got to embrace that side of it, mm. you know. I used to be the youngest on set. <laughs> always, for like ages, like I'm always the youngest on set. Do you behave differently now, though? Yeah. Do you still behave like you're the youngest on yeah, set? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, what's changed? What's major things have changed? Or something that surprised you that you weren't expecting about the industry when you kind of started out? I think we're moving in a better direction now mm -hmm. towards more, is the word inclusivity, mm -hmm. is that a word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I think is sadly lacking in our industry and needs to be addressed and should be addressed a long time ago. And different jobs, being people being educated in different jobs, I think that's starting to starting to open up now to different people from different backgrounds and I think that's as far as I'm concerned the more you open up the more talent you're going to get mm -hmm. and it's as simple as that really it's yeah. nothing to do with where you're from or you know it's just you open out the you know you open your search wide you're going to find better better yeah. people yeah. and um, so I'm glad about that I think that's a really good positive thing and even daft things like the amount of female directors I'm now suddenly being directed by and it's just it's great mm -hmm. it's really nice because different people bring different things and different backgrounds, different experience, life experiences, they bring that to the table and they can't help but make you, make it all better. Yeah, I yeah. Think. Um, Actually, there was something I wanted to add to what Sean said about inclu inclusivity, is that, um, you know, no matter how, how much confidence you have or how, much, how in my case, lack, mm. um, you know, I always felt like a misfit or an oddball or that I didn't belong, um, but I always, I always told myself that that you exist in the world, so therefore there's a place for you in this industry. And it's the, I think anybody who feels like I can't become an actor because you exist, mm. and we, you know, the the job of uh, filmmakers and is to write about our life and society. Yeah. And if you are a part of that, then there's a place for you mm. yeah. in the industry. Thank you for watching this episode of the Red Production Company podcast. It's been absolutely wonderful to have Sean Dooley and Richard Armitage with me. And I hope that you can leave a review, like and subscribe, and follow all of the Red social media channels so that you can keep up to date with when we're releasing new episodes. Thank you for watching.